So yeah, this is a younger, more beautiful version of myself. This was probably about three years ago before COVID-19 hit and I gained about 20 pounds. Uh, uh, but anyways, that this is me playing the drums, the conga drums, um, uh, which is very predominant in a lot of Latino music, Latin culture, Latin music. Uh, from from cumbia to salsa to timba to rumba to bomba to any, any type of music you name it there's in latin america there's probably congas congas in the ensemble as well as even american music and now you know this drum has gone worldwide so you can actually see this drum in a lot of different styles of music now but it did originate in uh, uh in cuba in latin america <clears throat> and i'm going to talk a little bit about that history in a second so yeah, so as my historian, I actually chose Voltaire. And the reason why I chose Voltaire is because there was a quote that he says um, in the reading, which really uh, related to my object. And so this is the quote that he says that I, that really related to what I'm trying to do with the conga. So it says, there is only one way to know with certainty something of ancient history. And this is to see if any uncontestable monuments remain now of course incontestable means not able to be disputed so something that cannot be dis uh, disputed and so i see i look at the conga drum as a inc inc incontestable monument because it you know the history of the conga drum starts in africa it comes to latin america and now it's it's all over the world it's a drum it's a worldwide drum now but there's no disputing where it comes from and that is africa and so this quote really stood out to me uh, that solidified my object with certainty um as something of ancient history so let's get into the history of the conga um you can't talk about the history of the conga without first talking about africa so um, as you can see right here, this is a map of West Africa. You see Nigeria, you see Togo, Benin. Um, and so this highlighted area right here, prior to the forming of these modern day countries, was known as Yoruba land. Now, European enslavers, uh, this is what they knew when they would go to the West African coast. They would go to Yoruba land and trade for slaves. And a majority of the slaves from Yoruba land were brought to places like Brazil, Cuba, and other places around Latin America and even North America. Um, and so it's a very important uh, history, and especially in regarding to the conga drum, because a lot of the culture that was that that um, came from Yoruba land to Cuba is what influenced the development of the conga drum. And so, um, so even though this was this whole area was known as Yoruba land, there were smaller factions uh, and subcultures within the greater umbrella known as Yoruba. And so the Yoruba was a people, they were a tribe, but there were subcultures within that tribe that had their own kind of deities and their own religions, practices and things like this, this right? So even though they were all Yoruba, you can't put them all under the same umbrella because they did have um, subcultures within the larger Yoruba um, culture. Now right here, this is what uh, what is known as an appease drum. Um, and so as you can see, it's like a, a wooden log. It's hollow in the middle. Um, the top, you can see these wooden pegs that kind of stick, stick out from the top, from the rim. And you see the skin that's kind of, uh, you know, they slit the skin in certain areas and they would stretch that over the pegs in order to kind of stretch out the top of the, the, the drum, the skin on the top of the drum, which would then tune the drum. So, and then when the, you know, when the skin would, cause it would be wet when they did this. And it's actually the same way we still kind of uh, put skins on modern day gongas. So we do the same thing. We wet the skin until it's pliable and then we, we put it on a drum and let it dry hard. So this is what they did here. Um, and then you can see that there's like a, a deity's face carved into the into the drum itself. And I'm assuming that because this, this is an appeased drum, that that face is a representation of a deity known as Ifa, because people who play the appeased drum were Ifa worshipers. So going into the religious aspect 
of the Yoruba people. We can't talk about drums without talking about the religion of the Yoruba people because this is what the drums were originally used for, were for the religious practices um, of the Orisas. Now, the Orisas are deities, um, and these deities represent natural occurrences, you know, mundane occurrences that happen around us every day, all the time. So, for example, the air, you know, fire, water, um, anger, happiness, love. You know, these are things that that natural occurrences that happen to us every day or that we are around every day. So, you know, each of those things gets a deity. And um, so uh, along with this, uh, there are different drums specifically played for and uh, uh, for specific deities as well. Uh, so, for example, they have the uh, Igbin drum, um, which is played by the worshippers of Obatala. They have the Agba Abalufun drum, which is played by worshippers of Abalufun. And then they have the Peace drum, which I just showed you before, which is played by the wor worshippers of Ifa. Um, and then there's other drums as well. They got the, the Bata drums. They got the Bembe drums and many, many other drums. It's it's, it's it's crazy. It's incredible how many drums there are in Africa, different styles for different orisas. And, you know, they play different rhythms on each drum. And it's 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 awesome. So, yeah. So we can't talk about the Yoruba without talking or the drums without talking about the religion, a religious aspect of the drums as well. And so this drum right here is a very rare instance. Um, this drum is called the Akan drum. And it's called the Akan drum because it comes from the Akan region in Ghana. And at first, um, scholars believed it was a Native American drum. And as science, you know, advanced and new techniques developed, they were able able to um, to trace the drum actually back to Africa, to, to the Ghana region, to the Akan region in Ghana. Um, and so this drum right here was collected in the early 18th century. Um, so the early 1700s in the colony of Virginia, because that's when... Um, they were colonies at that time still and so a lot of scholars believe that this drum right here actually came across the transit uh, the Atlantic through the transatlantic slave trade along with the slaves and that it was used when the slaves were forcibly made to do exercise by dancing on the slave ships and uh, so scholars believe this drum was used for that particular practice um, when they would make the slaves dance as a form of exercise so let's go ahead let's go ahead and talk about Cuba. Now between the years of uh, 1659 and 1866, around three quarters of a million uh, Africans were brought as slaves to, to the island of Cuba. And when they arrived to Cuba, uh, they formed these clubs and these societies. Um, they were called Cabildos and Abaqua societies within Cuba. And the reason they were able to form these societies and these clubs is because the Spanish in their own colonies were a lot more lenient than the British were in their colonies. And they allowed um, their subjects to kind of obtain a lot more of their own cultural um, beliefs and, and uh, traditions. So um, these cabildos and these societies help the Africans to obtain a lot of their own culture and their drumming and their rhythms and you know their foods and stuff like that and in this painting right here you can see um, this is what this is a festival called Carnival now Carnival is a festival that's connected to the Catholic religion of Lent so the whole point of Carnival is that you sin for like seven days prior to Lent um, in order to get it out of your system and in this painting, you can see some Africans dressed as Orisas, um, the deities that I talked about earlier. And you see Africans drumming, you know, with their hands and, you know, they're dancing and it's a celebration. And there's food and and it's incredible. And it's it's a festival that's actually still, it still goes on till, to today. And um, actually in Brazil is like one of the biggest carnivals. Uh, it's worldwide. It's known worldwide. Uh, but anyways back to 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 the cabildo so these cabildos and societies got were so influential within the overall culture of cuba that it started penetrating the african culture started penetrating the cuban music even the white music um they started incorporating 
uh, African style style rhythms and drums into the European ensembles, and you know even the way people start were dancing, they incorporated a lot of the African style dance, and so a lot of the elites in Cuba in the in the 19th century saw this as a threat. They saw like this this these savages and their music and their culture was kind of penetrating. Um, even the white European society within Cuba. So what they did is they went around and they started attacking these clubs and these cabildos and they started burning their drums and, you know, things like this. So what the Africans, Africans did is they sub, they subterfuged a lot of the, the drums in order to kind of Europeanize them and make them more acceptable within the society. So they started doing things like using staves from um, olive barrels in order to form their drums and instead of using like straight hollow logs right and they also started using metal on the drums like these metal rings and tuning lugs so they started inventing ways to tune the heads with metal tuning lugs and this this is kind of how the modern day conga drum was formed so now i want to talk about the drums in modern day cuba um, in this in this photo right here, you see these drummers and these dancers, and they're all dressed in white, which is uh, very common within the Santeria religion. And these drummers right here are probably playing a rhythm for a certain deity, a certain orisa. And then you have the dancers dancing that that dance for that orisa. Um, so what happened in Cuba with the religion, um, we talked about a little bit about the religion before, but what happened in Cuba is that, you know, the Yoruba people weren't the only African tribes that were brought to Cuba. There were many other tribes that were brought to Cuba as well, like the Mina um, and a couple other tribes as well. And so what they did is they fused all their, their religions together. And today, now a lot of the religions are, are fused together into what's called Santeria. Now, Santeria means the way of the saints. And the reason why it was named Santeria is because the, the Africans needed a way to kind of hide the fact that they were still worshiping their own gods, their deities, their orisas. So they saw a lot of similarities with the Catholic saints. And so what they did is they, they each saint would represent one of their own de their own orisas. Um, in order to hide the fact that when they were, it, it, you know, to the to somebody who did not know what was going on, it would look like they were just, you know, praying to the saint, right? But in reality, they were praying to like an orisa that was con that was represented by that saint. So that's how Santeria um, kind of came about, and it kind of mixed with Catholicism. So it's it's like a mixture of, of a fusion of African religion and spirituality spirituality with um, European. Uh, style christianity or catholicism and so this is right here is the way that the modern drums are kind of used nowadays is you know they they play in what's called rumbas and um instead of having one drum for one deity they pretty much just use either the congas or the batas to play rhythms for many deities now this is more of a modern way that the conga is used um the last slide was more of the religious the modern religious um, way the conga drum is used but this is the majority of the congas is used in ensembles like this nowadays salsa or what in cuba is called timba ensembles and as you can see like i was saying earlier how the african influence penetrated the european style uh ensembles and you can definitely see it right here where you see european um, style you know horns and you, you see African drums and you see the African percussion with the guy playing the guido and even the rhythms which you're about to hear in a second is very afro based so this is why I wanted to use Voltaire because that quote really stood out to me when he said that there's only one way to know with um, certainty something of ancient history and this is to see if any uncontestable monuments remain well as you can see, the the incontestable monument remain that remains today is the conga drum, and it is something that is undeniably um, African in its roots and Cuban in its form. So, this is the end of my presentation, and uh, I want to go ahead and show you an example of a song, and this is called Yoruba uh, by um, Havana de Primera. Hoy sea 
salsa y pura mi canción Con la bendición de los mares Hoy estoy cantando con pasión Con licencia y emayá Por humildad pura sal Oh Dios, soy Uruguá Religión que me atraviesa la historia cala profundo, mi fe limpia la impureza, 